In this screencast, we I want to look at permutations and combinations. These are special counting situations that came up often in computing, and we want to look at them, study them, because they do come up so often, and we have special formulas so that we don't have to rederive formulas using the basic counting principles. So for permutations, we assume that we have n objects, and we want to look at all possible arrangements of k of these objects. And we call all one of those arrangements a permutation of size k. And if, if k is just equal to n, then we ignore the size part, and we just talk about a permutation of n objects. So for example, let's suppose we have permutations of letters a, b, and c. That's three different things, and we want to look at all possible arrangements. So what arrangements can we get? Well, we can get a, b, c. We can get a, c, b. We can get b, a, c. We can get b, c, a. We get c, a, b, and c, b, a. Notice sort of the pattern that I used in order in terms of generating them. I varied the last two entries more quickly and then varied the earlier entries less quickly. Here's another example. Let's look at all the permutations of size 2 of four elements, A, B, C, and D. Now there's going to be more of these. I won't do them all, but just to get you, give you an example here, A, B, A, C, A, D, and then B, C, I'm sorry, B, A, B, C, B, D, etc. And you can see from that, you can sort of see a pattern emerging. There's going to be 12 of those, basically three for each first letter. So we can pretty much derive the formula pretty easily from what we already know. Basically, there's going to be n choices for the first entry. There'll be n minus 1 choices for the second entry, n minus 2, all the way down to n minus k plus 1 for the kth entry. Make sure you sort of understand why that is. Basically, there's going to be k different numbers here, and they go down by 1 each time. In that, the simple version of that is n factorial over n minus k factorial. Remember that n factorial is just the product of all the positive integers from 1 up to n. So a couple of examples. How many ways can a class of 30 students choose a president, a vice president, and a treasurer? Well, we know from the product rule if we just if we didn't know anything about permutations, we'd know what that's going to be. That's just going to be 30 times 29 times 28. But by our formula, what's that going to be equal to? That's going to be equal to 30 factorial divided by 27 factorial, namely 30 minus 3 factorial. The next example is a little trickier. Suppose we have seven letters, A, B, A through G, and we want to know how many arrangements there are that contain the string A, B, C as a substring. In other words, every, we want to know just arrangements where A, B, C occurs in the arrangement. Well, what's that going to be? Well, the way to think about that is just think of A, B, C as one character. So that means we'll have A, B, C and then four other characters. And so the arrangement of that is simply going to be 5 factorial. The next special situation I want to talk about is combinations. Again, we start with a set A of n objects, and but now what we're looking at is basically the situation where we're looking for subsets of size r. And the difference here between a, that and a permutation is order is not important. What that means is that we, it's very similar, the formula is very similar to, it's just the permutation formula, but we have to divide by the number of all the different ways that things can be in order, because we don't care about order anymore. So we use something called the quotient rule, which I haven't covered, that basically says, well, how many different ways can you reorder those r things that you've taken? Well, that's r factorial. And so we just take, to get the number of combinations, we take the permutations, number of permutations divided by r factorial. 
So let's take a little simple example and see why this works. Suppose we looked again at the combinations from four letters taking two at a time. In this case, we only have the set AB, AC, AD, BC, BD, CD. So we only have six combinations. If you go back and think about the example we did on with permutations, the set the set AB is going to correspond to two permutations, AB and BA. And that's going to be true for all the other sets say, for example, BD. That's going to correspond to BD and DB. And so in our, in our formula, we have to divide by 2 factorial, which just happens to be equal to 2. A couple more examples. Here's a, a question. How many bit strings of length 10 have exactly three ones? Well, the way to think about this problem is that what you're really doing is you have 10 different positions where the three ones could go. And once you know where the three ones go, you know where the zeros go. So all you have to do is pick out those three positions. And it doesn't matter what order you pick out those positions in. Position 4, 7, and 10 is exactly the same as position 7, 4, and 10. In other words, the bit string would be the same. So in this case, what we'd have is C, 10, 3, and that would be equal to 10 factorial divided by 7 factorial times 3 factorial. Again, make sure you see where this comes from using the formula for the combinations. The next example is, how many poker hands are there from a standard deck of 52 cards? Uh, we'll go over this in a lot more detail in class, but for right now, basically, just think of all 52 cards being different, and we want to find out how many different ways there are to pick five cards out of those 52. So in this case, that's just going to be C, 52, 5, and that's going to be equal to 52 times 51 times 50 times 49 times 48 over 5 factorial, which these days would be pretty easy to compute using a good calculator. So here are some practice problems for you. Uh, pause the slides right now and give them all a try. Make sure you try on them. Give, it, make, give them some thought. And the next slide will contain the answers, and you can look at those. So this first one, the key insight here is that because of the rotation, we can take any arrangement, any permutation, and basically six different permutations are really the same permutation because they can be rotated from one to another. You should draw yourself a picture and think about that. So basically the, the final answer in this case would then be the number of permutations of six people, which would just be six factorial, divided by six. How many permutations of the letters, eight letters A through H, that contain A, B, A, B, C, D, and C, D, and A, B, C, and D, E? This is just another example similar to the one we did on the previous slides. Let me just give you the answer to this one. This is going to be 5 factorial because we have one symbol that's A, B, C, we have another symbol that's D, E, and then we have the symbols F, G, and H. So we have five symbols, so it's five factorial. If you do the same counts over here, uh, A, B, and C, D, it's going to be six factorial, and A, B will be seven factorial. How many bit strings of length 10? Exactly four ones. Well, that's just going to be C, 10, 4. That's the positions of the four ones that we're picking out from the 10 possible positions. Fewer than four ones. That's just going to be the number of ways you can get zero ones, one one, two ones, and three ones. So that's just going to be apply the sum rule to the different combinations. C10, zero, plus C10, 
plus up through C103. And more than three ones, again, you could write it all out, similarly to of the above, or you could just do, notice that you've already done it for up through three ones, and now you want four or more, so all you do is take the total number of subsets, total number of bit strings, which is two to the n, minus the fewer than four.